It's me, Wes Anderson. And welcome back to another episode of I tried to find a statue of a goddess that I liked online, but I hated all of them. So, in a true stubborn fashion, decided to make my own. Hello, I am Fel the Blythe, and I'm a Hellenic polytheist. I make content around Hellenic polytheist things, Hooray! and also just general pagan stuff. You don't have to be a Hellenic polytheist to enjoy this video. Of course, most of this is a crafting video. I'm trying something new. If you like it, let me know. So where to begin? Taiki. Taiki Fortuna. My statue is specifically Taiki and Fortuna kind of combined into one. Taiki is the goddess or the personification of luck. If you check out my Hellenistic era video, I talk all about Taiki. Well, I don't talk all about Taiki. <laughs> I talk a little bit about Taiki. Um, so Taiki is an example of a daemon, a personification of something who then later became revered as a full-blown goddess. Many cities had their own Tykes, Tyche of Antioch, Tyche of Rome, Tyche of Athens, etc., etc. Kind of you would petition that Tyche to bring blessings to your city. This tradition continued into the Roman era with Fortuna. Tyche's more than just a goddess of wealth. She's also a goddess of luck and a goddess of fate in general. So when I was online looking for Taiki, because me and Taiki had a bit of a moment back at the beginning of the year, uh, this video, if you ever want to meet a time traveler, this video is your stop. I mean, I didn't actually really put together that my sort of 50s look combined with talking about time traveling was kind of a a little bit of a meme there, unintentional. Uh, I recently learned how to do poodling my hair. It's very long and very thick, so it's very difficult, but it's fun. That's not the point. So this video is a little bit of a time travel because I started thinking about making this bust, geez, back in February? Yeah, it must've been back in March or February. And I started building her in the early spring, as you will see in my video. And my video tracks from late spring through a lot of the summer. And then I just stopped. And then we time traveled to November. Also speaking of November, it's uh, highly unlikely this video is gonna go out before Thanksgiving. So I'm wearing my little, uh, little Christmas sweater here. I actually made this. And uh, if you want to check it out, I actually have an Etsy shop in the uh, immortal words of the commentary YouTuber Jarvis Johnson, always be plugging. I'll link that above here. It's not really like a cult or pagan or Hellenic polytheist related. It's more like pastel goth, Y2K, sort of groovy, edgy fashion or a little cute kawaii fashion. So that's, that's this. Anyway, representing my own, it's not merch, but representing my own product here. Anyway, what was my problem with all of these Taiki busts, you might ask? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna pop up some of them around me here. You see, they're all, they all portray Taiki as this very skinny, sexy lady with just bags of wealth and money. It just didn't appeal to me because to me, my relationship with Taiki Fortuna is one of accepting the wheel of fate, petitioning fate and fortune in a, in a broader sense, not just in a monetary sense. So I was like, none of these statues are clicking. And I really felt that I wanted a statue of Taiki because she feels very, I mean, she's a personification. She feels very real to me. So I was inspired to make my own. And the inspiration that I went to was some extant, statues of Taiki because they're just they're just beautiful a lot of them don't even portray her with money a lot of these uh, portray her with other lesser daemons at that time it depicted her with Pluton who in the Roman era while Pluton Pluton or Pluto is also a little tiny cherubic daemon thing that you see in the Roman era but anyway so he is like wealth 
So you see depictions of her with Pluton. There's so many beautiful depictions of uh, frescoes of Tyche in people's homes where she is both controlling wealth as well as just generally the wheel of time and the scales of fate. So this was the Tyche that I wanted to connect to, this literally classical sense of Tyche. I really don't know where this weird, sexy, money-decked, bejeweled fortuna came from my guess is probably like some 90s witchy shop it has that kind of aesthetic so i set out to make my own unluckily for me um i don't know how to carve marble i love getting marble statues i think they're beautiful or alabaster i think they're very crisp however i don't have access <laughs> to any of those materials i've done a lot of polymer clay stuff before i'm, I'm okay at polymer clay but hate the way polymer clay smells and it's very plasticky and it's literally it's literally plastic so it feels kind of uh, disconnected for me like I don't feel as connected to the polymer clay piece plus I was going to be building this up a lot I did a lot of research and it just wasn't going to work for me to bake her in multiple parts because I knew that this was going to take a long time so what I got instead was air dry clay. I love air dry clay. The one problem with air dry clay is that it is water soluble. So that means the statue can't go outside, which is really sad. But air dry clay tends to be made out of more natural materials. You don't finish what you do. You wrap it up in saran wrap or something like that, or you spritz it with water. And if you and water, you can like easily adjust. It's way more easy to smooth things out. So that was one of the reasons that I wanted to do it because a lot of these statues are very, very smooth. And I don't know if I've actually even seen people make deity statues out of polymer clay. Polymer clay is like a very specific kind of tool and it works better for smaller projects. So I began and, um, <laughs> and uh, I realized partway through as I began with this, this chunk of clay here, that this imagery might get me demonetized. It was a very hot summer. It was very dry, which was both a blessing and a curse, meaning things dried easier, but it was also a drought and that really sucked. So that means I was gonna leave this outside. And I was like, I don't want my neighbors to judge me. <laughs> they already judge us plenty enough. I don't need to give them more uh, fuel to the fire. So I ended up hiding her a little bit away outside, but I was like, as I knew I needed a big, strong base, and I knew I needed to let it dry for a long time, so that it was really thick. Well, it certainly looked like I was doing something else in my videos. That's for sure. My next step was building the chest area because I needed to be a good base for the head. And this would give me the, the correct proportions. It's easier to build the head up and do a longer neck than it is to sort of move all that down. So I built, started building the chest area. This actually went easier than I expected. I have issues of making my shoulders even, perhaps because my own shoulders are not actually even. And oh my gosh, it took me forever to try to get the different um, bust areas correctly proportioned. I also was like, do I want to add clothing? Do I not? I considered like sewing clothing, but then I felt that like sewing something took away a bit from it. So I decided against that. This was my, one of my favorite parts. I love uh, molding bodies. That sounds so wrong. <laughs> I mean, I just don't personally think I possess the skills to make clothing look realistic on this. Plus, I liked the idea of kind of like raw fate or fate laid bare. It felt more interesting to me to have lack of clothing, but add accessories, which I will depict later. So then the next thing I did was her face. And oh my God, there is hours like at least three to four hours of me just doing the freaking head uh, and specifically the face. This was hard because I needed to get it to to have a steady base. And I know, I know people are going to yell at me and be like, oh, you should have created a uh, aluminum foil base. I didn't, I, I, I didn't feel like it. I'm a little bit lazy and I know it's kind of more effort to do this, but yeah, frankly, I couldn't be arsed. Maybe next time I'll do that. I also feel like that works better for polymer clay because air dry clay is so fragile. I also wanted to have a nice weight to her. So this part, the head was easy. Getting chin, the indentations for where your eyes are and beginning the nose and like a little bump for the mouth. That part was easy. 
getting it evenly coated was a little bit harder, but the real troubles began when it was time for the face. I hate mouths. I hate them. Which sucks because I think they're so pretty in real life. <laughs> but when it comes to art, I hate them. You'll notice I don't really share any of my art on here, but when I do art in general, I like to draw people with like little veils over their mouths. It's easy to draw people with face masks. That's nice. I just, there's just something about mouths that I just can't get right. And I think I spent a good hour just on the mouth alone. Noses, I hate drawing noses. I, just, I hate drawing every feature except for eyes, <laughs> which sucks because I really like most of what I draw as people or anthropomorphic things. So I have issues. I need to take a drawing class or something. Doing clay noses, easy, done. That is very easy for me because it's very physical. Usually where I get hung up on drawing noses is the like, the nostril region, it's hard for me to depict this 3D shape in 2D. But I also have a lot of statues for me to choose from. I also have my own nose that I can like a reference. So doing the clay nose was easy. Um, getting the kind of shape I wanted was harder. It's really easy to do flatter noses, but I wanted to do the classical larger flat nose where it has a bit of a bump here, if you see that in a lot of statues. But the mouth. Good lord, the mouth. You'll notice in my clips that I uh, I basically gave her a split filtrum, which is what cats and dogs have, where this is your, this is a good look, this is your filtrum right here uh, in a split filtrum. You know, some, I mean, some people have split filtrums too, but generally people aren't supposed to have split, split filtrums, uh, but cats do. So I accidentally gave her a split filtrum because I find it really hard to depict the, like I, this, it's th this part of the mouth that I struggle with like the way that it fades into the skin is really hard that's why I also usually draw like femme people or femme presenting people or people who like to wear lipstick because lipstick is so much easier for me to depict because it's such a harsher line than it is for me to depict natural lips where it kind of fades in color so that was really hard to get that bump here without giving her like a cat's mouth. I actually did end up giving a cat's mouth and then in another clip you'll see I tried to fix it. So that was really hard. I, t I spent so long, like I literally think I spent at least one hour and this whole video is around like six hours long of me just crafting and painting. I think I spent like a full one six of it just on the mouth. I had a lot of fun depicting the cheekbones and jaw area I guess. I don't know why the subtlety of that I really enjoy. It's also really satisfying on air dry clay because it's so wet and that's why I like air dry clay over polymer clay because there's something about it that's just so much more I don't know you really feel like you're bringing something to life so that's what I, I really liked the subtleties I also like brow lines those are really fun to do the eyes I was surprised at actually you'll see me change kind of part way through if I wanted her eyes open or closed I ended up going with closed because I liked the idea, what I was kind of going for in general with my Taiki was it's a, both a peaceful and a sorrowful depiction. And also it's like fate is a little blind. Like I don't think fate necessarily chooses to smile on one particular person. That's why she's not smiling. And like all of this is like, it's, I talked about this in my divination video, divination by art. So a lot of this was seeing what Taiki was exploring and explaining to me and then me going from there. The eyes actually didn't take too long. Um, the mostly difficult part was like making them even, the face is just slightly uneven, but like, I'm not a, I'm not a classical sculptor, it's fine. So then the next thing I had to do was her hair and her little crown. So that kind of crown, um, you see this Taiki, you see Taiki wearing it in a lot of depictions of Taiki. You see Demeter wearing it, you see Persephone wearing it. It's kind of like a, a queen crown type thing. Like it's not, yeah, so that's oftentimes any sort of god or goddess or any sort of goddess who is queen. Epithets, which is most of them, have that sort of crown. It's probably, it was probably made out of gold would be my assumption. Um, probably pretty plain, maybe some carvings on there. Like they want to be like jewel encrusted like today's crowns. So I wanted her to have that for sure, for sure. Because, you know, Taiki does have 
to do with wealth and fate and luck of the draw, etc. So I wanted to depict that. And then her hair. I liked the idea of having her hair up, which is how she's depicted iteration of her. But I knew I probably would have needed wires. And like I said, air dry clay is very fragile. And I didn't feel like learning how to do that in the process of this. So I went with her hair down. I also felt that this depicted her in this kind of like gray age zone. So she's like both young because her hair is down and it's long and it's beautiful. And then also she's a crown, which is kind of a symbol of like an older queen or something. Plus like hair down is like kind of a, a symbol of like a free woman or whatever. It's a symbol of freedom, I guess, and fluidity. So I wanted her to have that. The hair was a lot of fun. I actually anticipated hating doing the hair because if you look at these statues, they um they carve in like every single curl. And that's a lot of work. But with air dry clay, I dipped my clay molding tools in water and just by running them through the hair, I was able to easily depict that sort of depth without it being too crazy. I usually, again, with drawing, I hate drawing like crowns of heads or temples, like where your hairline is. I hate drawing hairlines, which is why usually characters <laughs> are either veiled or have their hair up in some way, or they have bangs or something because I find, I just, it's it's where the subtlety is, where it's like, it's hard for me to depict. It's like why it's hard to draw like nasobial creases in drawings without it making it look like a wrinkle because like there is a divot here but just by adding a line and I do a lot of line art so just by like adding a line it can look like a wrinkle so finding that balance between adding depth to something without making it look too extreme is really difficult for me in 2d drawing if anyone has any like tips on any of this since I'm not you know I'm not I'm not gonna really accept critiques on my taiki but if you have tips for like drawing or any of the things I'm talking about like lips how to make lips work how to do hairlines uh, in 2D drawing, let me know in the comments. Hair curls here, those are pretty difficult, but not too bad. The most difficult thing was getting them to lay and not lay. It was getting them to have enough support, but they were actually a lot of fun to, to do. So I, d I didn't hate that. And the hair was pretty easy besides those little curls. I just sort of slapped a big layer of air dry clay and then ran this through it so that it would be really strong and hold well while also having that depth to it. So, I've been talking for 22 minutes and my mouth is starting to foam with spit. So next, painting. Just kidding, hi, it's editing fell here. Before I could paint, I had to smooth her out. This is something that is wonderful, a wonderful part of air dry clay. I feel like this entire video is me just trying to convince everyone to use air dry clay. What's great about it is you can sand it down. Of course, wearing a mask because there are very tiny particles that go everywhere. So you sand down parts that are kind of clumped or you can use this part to sort of resize and even out, which is what I did with the crown as well as with her nose and lips and cheeks to give a very smooth look. So you sand it down, brush away the dust. I felt like an a paleontologist doing that. It was pretty cool. Then you take water and you dip your brush in water and then you can smooth it out. And this gives it a smooth texture while also giving it a, a more realistic kind of skin-like texture somewhat. So that's what I am doing here. It was a lot of fun. This is also how I smoothed down her crown even more and did some blending in those difficult parts I kept speaking of. I didn't get her completely even, but you know what? That's fine with me. Okay, now let's get back to the actual painting. I actually put this out in a poll in Yerosalinus. Shout out! I'll link that Discord in the description. I posted in there months ago now in the devotional project section, you know, asking what people thought about the color. A lot of people actually liked the natural color. My housemate also really liked the natural color. And like, while I also really, really liked it, I felt that the earthy tone was not what I was going for for Taiki. I have a Demeter statue planned because I really want like a three foot tall statue. You can't get three foot tall statues. Well, you can apparently in antique stores in New Zealand. 
you know who you are. But you can't get them, or at least not very easily up here. And especially if you don't have a car. So one of my housemates has like a three foot tall Mary and I really want a three foot tall Demeter for the garden. I don't know. Uh, that's a whole other bridge, but I would want that to be more for that natural kind of color. And I wanted Taiki to have more of that marble-esque feeling that I really liked because I felt that that fit what I was going for with her. Speaking of marble, I actually drank out of this mug. You'll see it in the clips. And I used it to help me get some of the, the facial stuff, especially the freaking lips. So I painted Taiki. I did several layers of gesso. Gesso is like a base layer. You use it a lot when you do clay because it also has a smoothing effect. So I think I did like three or four layers of gesso in order to get it to that white color. Um, and then I stopped working on Taiki for months. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you might know why. It's nothing too dramatic. Um, I mean, besides like 8 million COVID scares that really took a lot out of me and just general summer busyness and like feeling really depressed during the drought and summertime sadness, et cetera, all of that. So I put her on hold. But finally, I've picked her up again. And actually, just this morning, I finished adding a layer of paint on her. So I will let... Earlier in the day, Felicity, tell you all about that. Hello. It's me. It's fell from the past. It's fell from earlier in the day, actually. So, this here is my Taiki bust many <laughs> months later. I was originally going to get some sort of satin paint, but I couldn't find any at Michael's. Um, yeah, the Michael's that I go to, it's kind of like a no man's land. It's like in the basement, there's all fluorescent lights and there's never any stock. But anyway, so I couldn't find any satin paint. So I'm going to go with this classic pearl paint. I actually don't really like using this because I think it's like too shiny. So I'm going to try my hardest to lightly brush this on. I wanted to have some sort of depth to it that I was hoping the satin would do because the gesso right now is just not doing it for me. So I'm going to add a little bit of pearl to give it some depth, but not a lot. Wish me luck. You say you don't want to get in trouble That you don't find cause you got me I don't want to break your little bubble But you gotta wake up to reality Cause I Seeing your eyes, your head is full of dreams. Okay, and I think we're done. So now we just gotta let her dry, and then I will fast forward back to you later in the day, Phil. Okay, welcome back. As you can tell, uh, the curlers. Didn't do a whole lot. It's probably because my hair is too freshly washed and I didn't add hairspray to it. But you know what? Whatever. So now I'm going to bring her over. Here she is. She's very heavy. And then I'm going to add one last touch to her with you here today. So I'm honestly really proud with how she turned out. Again, I really would have preferred a satin, but you know, going with divination by art i think maybe she wanted to be a little bit more luxurious so here she is in her beautiful glory there's her hair the bottom is still like painted like this but she's never gonna be at this angle so that's fine even though i hate making lips i think these are some of the best lips i've ever made in clay they look like lips that's really what i was going for right now i'm going to do a little bit of the last thing which is i'm adding golden tears because taiki came to me during a time of desperation both monetarily and just fate wise as well and I was feeling really upset about fate and it was during the song Fortuna Desperata which I've sung before that she really came to me this idea of crying fate. I'm going to add that. I'm kind of nervous but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. This is actually brass color because I felt that the gold color they had was like too yellow. So here we go. Woo! It's fucking strong. That run where it goes.
she is i'm really happy with how she turned out i think like i wanted the tears to follow their own their own path so to say this gold really pops i'm gonna get a better image of her later but here she is i added some little spots to her crown to make it almost look like the gold was melting from like the sun or something and my cat is sitting in the corner okay that's fine you can be a part of this video too he really wants to be next to me but he can't be because she's here here she is. Maybe this will be the thumbnail. Oh, she's so pretty. She smells bad right now, but I'm not like a professional artist or anything. Like I just do this for fun. I have been trained in like digital art, but I have never been trained in the classical fine arts. And this is the first time I have made a statue out of air dry clay. I made a statue. I made my Apollo statue out of polymer clay several years ago. It turned out okay. It's first time I've, this is the first large project that I've done. And you know, if you see something that you wanna do, go forth and make my friends. No, don't get too in your head. Let, let the God speak to you. I'm gonna go light my candle to Hestia and I am going incorporate her into the household shrine. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you got something out of it. It took me a long time, but it's fun to be back in the swing of making normal videos. Let me know your thoughts on this style of, if this type of crafting video, if you like watching me make crafts, let me know. If there's anything that you wanna see more from a crafting video, also let me know. And also if you know how to freaking draw lips or hairlines, <laughs> let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, late fall wherever you are <laughs> goodbye folks you, ready. you just gotta trust the right don't have to be scary you just gotta fall